Okay. Move on with the step. We are now live on Facebook. Hello, group. Uh, hello, everyone that's watching live. And also, hello to everyone that is watching this on the replay. Um, uh, I, I know a lot of people have been watching this, these videos after the fact. And I've been trying to squeeze them in into my day, which was a very bright idea. I didn't really think that through ahead. but uh, So these are all at different times. But um, I know people have been watching the replay. Uh, replays, should I say, and this is, I can't believe it's day four, this fourth coaching, live coaching I'm doing four days in a row, and I'm joined by Kirsten Andlaw. Hi, Kirsten. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no, well, thanks for, for reaching out and uh, and asking for a bit of coaching. I think it's great, as I've seen in the videos previously, um, when we talk about specific topics that are really relevant to a particular person what i find is really helpful not only for the person to be coached around it which, which we may know but it's also great because quite often uh, as i've seen with some of the comments that even though you might be having a particular question or a whatever it will also resonate with other people and i know this topic of confidence that we will speak about today i'm sure will resonate with with other people too uh, in, in the group and uh, you know part of the reason that I'm doing these is because this is kind of the format that Steve and I will be doing a lot of the work this summer at, at our event and, and I wanted to give everyone a little bit of a flavor of the benefit of seeing you know a kind of Q&A style approach so without further ado I, I know we've taken the, the topic of confidence in general but could you tell us a little bit more about specifically what you want coaching on today? Um, so, well, basically, I've I've spoken to you before, and um, and I've gained a little bit of confidence in sharing the principles in general um, over the last few weeks, and um, and it's really amazing to see how how people resonate with it and and it's almost like you know i feel i feel actually i, I can see I, I understand a lot more than i thought i did um but the 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 group of people i'd like to work with like um one of the people i've i've seen an impact on is uh is my husband and he works in the corporate world and um I'd, I'd love to work with people in the in the corporate world because I just I think the ripple down effect in terms of um, a company um, and it ripples down into people's lives is it would just be such a great impact I think um, but not having any corporate background at all like my background is in movement in uh, yoga and mindfulness in sort of holistic work. Um, I seem to have a, I seem to have this thing about, I can't possibly speak to, you know, some director of a company or anything like that because I don't really know their world. I don't really, I don't really know what goes on for them. Like, lots of friends, you know, say, oh, I could introduce you to that person. I could introduce you to HR in that company. And I'm, and it's all really great and I'd really love that. But at the same time, I'm sort of finding myself going, yeah, 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 that'd be great. Maybe in a, in a, you know, in a few weeks time or, you know, like, well, you know, I'll, I'll be in touch and I just never do. And, and I can tell there is something about me feeling that I'm not, maybe they won't take me seriously because I'm not from that world. I'm not a corporate person. I don't know what it's like to, you know, run a company, you know, with loads of employees, you know, so, and even though I know that a lot of the, the things they would come to me, like people I have worked with, um, privately, they obviously have jobs and most of them have corporate jobs and, and they come with things like stress and, um, you know, relationships, work relationships, colleagues, bosses, and that sort of stuff. And I'm sort of thinking, well, it probably won't be much different to that in terms of what they come with, with to me. But for some reason, I, I have this block about, well, they, they probably won't, you know, I'm, I'm just Kirsten, you know, 
doing my thing and I'm not a company. I'm not this, you know, whatever. Um, and I know that that's a lot of rubbish, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's there and it's, um, it's stopping me. It's stopping me from, from going somewhere. You know, I think perhaps it, it will, there will always be a sense of that there. Like, like, like at the moment, like I had this similar thing about just simply sharing the principles with people I work with already. And, and I sort of got over that. But what happened was that I still had that feeling of, Ooh, I don't know if you know what you're talking about, but I was okay to just do it anyway. And, and I saw, well, actually there's stuff coming out that makes sense. And it seems to make sense to the other person. So maybe it's not all that bad. Um, English being my second language, I always have this other thing of maybe I can't quite find the right words or express myself, you know, well enough to, you know, get it across. Um, so, yeah, with, with, with people in general, I've been able to get through that just by doing it and seeing actually I do know something but with this other group of people I sort of have this thing of oh I'd have to meet them for a coffee and oh what would I say and hmm and oh I don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah you know um, we've got a bunch of people watching and I'd love to hear um anyone watching, can you resonate with this? Because, because I can resonate with this and I, and I, I am pretty sure that if not everyone, almost everyone watching this can, can relate to that feeling either with, with clients in general or with a particular kind of client or a particular type of client. It's a very common concern that people have and, and I can relate to it. I can relate to having that same concern too. And, you know, why would, why would someone listen to me? What if I get it wrong? What are the right words? And, uh, and I can see the comments coming up. Yeah. Hell yeah. People are, people are responding to this already. <laughs> so you're not alone, right? We are not alone. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because I, I guess in a way I, I came from the corporate world. When I decided to become a coach, I was, I was in that world. I'd wear a suit every day to work. I would, um, <clears throat> you know, I would, I would talk corporate speak. I can, I can speak their language, <laughs> you know, right? Funny, funny phrases that people use in corporate. And what's interesting is, um, since I, since I left that world, I've not done any coaching really in corporate. I have clients who, are, you know, I've got one client who's a very senior vice president in a large organization, but, um, and other clients who work in that world, like, like you say, but in my head, I hadn't done any of that corporate work. And so recently you might have seen, I've started to record a podcast aimed at, at business people, corporate types. And what's been so interesting from recording that, and we've just taken different topics, I haven't started releasing them yet, but I've got like 10 or so recorded. And I, I've started taking, um, you know, you know, uh, different topics. So one was a topic on dealing with difficult people. One was a topic on stress. One was a topic on building a great team. Things like this, things that these people would be interested in. And what was so interesting to me is, while sometimes a little bit of the language <clears throat> might be different, a little bit, right? I'm not saying there's, there's nothing to learn. What I was so surprised about was all of the trainers and coaches who I'm interviewing and everyone I'm interviewing has had significant experience of taking the principles into corporates or into large organizations. And there's nothing that they've said that seems different to what I do with, with my men's groups, with my women's groups or with coaches. Mm. And the beauty of the principles 
is we're talking about our experience. We're talking about the psychological experience, the human experience. And so I, I was, I was, uh, I actually went for a sports massage yesterday, um, of all things. And this woman's giving me a massage. And so she says, so what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a life coach, right? And she goes, oh, really? And I said, yeah, I know it's a little different. And she said, no, no, I've had life coaching. I said, oh, cool. And, uh, she goes, what kind of life coaching do you do? Do you focus on relationships? Do you focus on money? Do you focus on what, you know, she said a few things and I said, well, I, I focus on everything, which is to say my focus is on how the mind works. And and I said often when clients come to me for one particular issue and I'll work with them, quite often the issue will, will shift and change and something else will come out. But it's okay. I can work with people across the board because what we're, what I'm focused on, if you like, is, is the psychological, um, mechanism behind people's behavior behind their experience so regardless of if someone's having a relationship issue or whether they're having an issue around money or whether they're having an issue with their business what i do is is go and look at the psychology of that right now that's not m just me that's you mm -hmm. that's every single mm -hmm. coach in this group that that's what we're pointing to. That's what Sid was pointing to. That's what all the first generation teachers are pointing to. And it's why, you know, someone like Kathy Casey, who, who was a therapist, you know, when I, um, when I interviewed her for this group last year, she said, I've kind of worked everywhere. I've worked with every single kind of group. I've worked with every kind of person. Because what we're talking about is it's a human thing, right? It's not a this kind of person mm. thing. It works with this person or that person. This works with sports people. This other methodology works with education. This other kind of methodology works with children. This other kind of methodology works with entrepreneurs. Y you know, this, and you can see it now more so now than ever before that there are colleagues of ours, right, who are taking the principles into every kind of field. Right, like the principals have gone into the military, they've gone into government, they've gone into business. Um, you know, I did my relationship series. It's gone into traditional life coaching. It's been in in therapy. It's been with PTSD, right? Like anything that you can think of, someone is helping people in that area with their understanding of the principles. Mm. So what's really useful for me and helpful for me is that in terms of sharing the principles, I don't know any arena or any person who doesn't know about the principles. I don't know anyone who couldn't get some benefit from learning about them. Mm, I, I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Right. So my starting point is I might not know what they know. And they might have some amazing skills and experience and I could learn from them. I, I do learn from all of my clients. But, it, but if I can introduce them, it's not about me, but if I can introduce them to something that, that helps explain their behavior, that helps explain their experience, which then has a transformative effect, right? Why, why would I not do that? Yeah, absolutely. It's it it's so interesting you're saying all of that because it makes so much sense and it just makes me realize that for some reason I had this thing in my head about well obviously yes the principles can be applied to anything and useful for anything but obviously you work you're going to work with people that you know you've you've experienced what they've experienced, like, you know, I'm a mum of three, so maybe mothers, or maybe this, or maybe that. Um, and which is, perhaps that's where my thought was coming from of, well, but if you want to work with those people, well, you can't really, because you have no idea about their world. But I guess, I guess that's part of the point is, I get to know about their world.
perhaps even because just thinking about it I have worked with you know lots of moms and, and, and people that you know similar background to me and and there have been times particularly pre knowing about the principles where I'd listen to someone and before they even finished I'd be like oh yeah I know I, I know I know what you're talking I, like I, I sort of I know what you mean I know what you're talking about I've been there sort of thing and it sort of stopped me from really really listening to them and to their world so I guess I guess I could just, you know, in a way, look at it from the other angle of, well, I don't know their world at all. So I have no idea of what what goes on in their lives, in their world, in their stresses. So I start from a place of there won't be any judgment of, oh, yeah, I got you. Oh, yeah, I I know what that's like. Oh, no, oh yeah, I know what you need. It's a... It's very much a... A, a clean canvas, an empty. Mm. Mm. And what you're saying about, yeah, it's so it's so true about. It's about being human, that's what we work with, but the human experience, and it doesn't matter where we work or where we, you know, what our background is, we all have, you know, the human experience unfolds in the same way for all of us, even though the experience itself may be different, but how, how it works, it's the same. So I guess there is no difference whether it's a person in a suit in front of you or, or someone suffering from cancer or uh, a child or, you know, who, who, whoever, whoever it may be. Yeah. Mm. Perhaps there is something in there for me, though, that, and again, that's just my perception of the corporate world being such that, you know, if I were to meet someone from, a, from the corporate world, that I'd have to have something like, you know, like a little presentation or I have to, do, do you see what I mean? Sort of the way, the way people conduct Business in that world is, 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 in my perception, different. And, and perhaps I've been getting hung up on the idea of, well, I'll have to have a presentation ready or something ready rather than just keeping it to what I do normally. And that's just have a conversation. Maybe. You know, if, if, if I was coaching you, and you were not a 3P based coach. You were, you were any coach. So we've talked a lot about the principles and, and how the principles can, can help explain the psychology for anyone because it's a, it's a universal thing. But let's say you didn't even know about the principles. Let's say you were a coach. And let's say you, um, you were using some other methodology to help people, right? And, and you said, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I don't have confidence to approach these corporate types. I'm not sure about it. You know, what I, the other thing I would say is that coaching isn't the same as consultancy. Right? Now, really, when I do my sessions, I kind of mix everything. There's a bit of teaching, there's a bit of coaching, there's a bit of consultancy, right? But really, you know, as coaches, 
great coaching, like you said, you, I mean, you, you've seen this for yourself just now. It's about really listening, regardless, any coach, NLP coach, right? Transformative coach, whatever you want to call yourself, it doesn't matter. It's when you show up totally empty and say, tell me about your world. Tell me about your problems and challenges. Tell me where you're struggling. And, and getting an indication of, okay, what's, what's their, I think in NLP, they call it the map. What's their map? I never did NLP, but I've picked a few things up, right? <laughs> what's, what's their map of the world? How do they see reality, right? Mm -hmm. And then what are their challenges based in that reality? Now, coaching as a profession, like I said, separate to the principles, whatever kind of coach you are, you can work with someone and say, okay, they see their reality like this. This is the challenge and problem they're having. Now, as a coach... Can I see, not that I'm an expert in the world, but can I see something that could help them, right? And it might take a bit of time to get there. It might involve asking a lot of questions, right? So it yeah. could be that someone says, oh, we're having this real problem with da-da-da-da-da. And you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know about that world. So you ask, right? Yeah. Well, why is that important? What have you tried so far? What seems to be the struggle, right? What do you think the answer is? You know, you start listening and asking questions. And, and the great thing is, we don't need to be experts. Like I said, regardless of what coach, kind of coach you are, we don't need to be experts as coaches, right? If a company wanted to hire an expert, they would hire a consultant. Coaches, we're not designed or, or our, our job role isn't about giving people the answer. It's about creating a space where the client can find answers for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I like your distinction between a coach and a consultant. Yeah. There's a great book I read many, many years ago when I was in the corporate world, right? Which is kind <laughs> of made up, by the way. It's thought generated. Um, but I, I read this book and it was um, called Getting More. And it was a book, not a 3 P book. It's about negotiation. And the guy who wrote the book was some kind of senior professor in one of the top Ivy League schools in the US. And he's known as one of the best negotiators in the world. I forgot the guy's name now. And he went in and do you remember when there was a writer's strike in the US? All the writers for all the big shows. I don't know if you remember a few years ago. They went on yes, strike. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the guy that came in and, and broke the strike up, right? Now, what's really interesting is he said, I read the book, it's a big, thick book. I found it fascinating because that was a large part of my, my role at work was negotiation. So... In this book, he, he, one of the things he wrote was um, he had to negotiate. It's so funny. This guy gets hired in around all around the world to do these crazy negotiations. And he got hired in to go to some kind of South American jungle and negotiate with one of the local tribes for, you know, whatever they were growing, right? And he said most people would go in and they would wear and try and dress like the locals, Right. Yeah. And they would yeah, try and yeah. say, look, I'm like you, you're like me. Right. And try and <laughs> build rapport. And mm. what was so interesting is this guy goes, no, when he went in, imagine in the jungle in South America, he went in wearing a three piece suit. <laughs> right. Or something like that. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he goes, I wore a yeah. suit. He goes, I dressed like an American. And he said, I went there and said, look, I am different to you. I'm an American. And I dress like this and you guys are this and you dress like that. So let's talk. I'm not going to pretend I'm like you and I'm not going to pretend you're like me. So then let's, let's have a conversation to find out where you're at and where I'm at and what you want and what's important to you and what I want and what's important to me. And he said it led to a much better dialogue because he wasn't trying to pretend to be something mm. that he wasn't. 
And he said a lot of negotiators, they try and pretend to be like the other person to build this kind of fake rapport and it doesn't work. And, and I was just reminded of that, you know, in this conversation that you don't need to pretend to be anyone that you're not. They're not hiring someone like them. It's like, well, you know, we've got all, we've got all these eyes on our problem or whatever. And, you know, let's say they bring you in to help them with well-being in the workplace for argument's sake, right? Well, if they knew how to do that, they would be doing it. Now, they might love the fact that you're a well-being expert, you're a coach, you're a yoga teacher, because it's so different to them. Mm. It's a fresh pair of eyes. And you can bring something different to their business, to their world. Whereas if you turned up in a suit with a presentation, it would just be what more of what they already have. It makes me feel quite emotional because it just keeps it real. It's just... Yeah, I don't have to be anyone else than who I am. Like the moment you said he walked into the jungle in a suit. It's almost like paradoxically in a way because, you know, when people try and emulate, you know, I'm like you, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I look like a corporate person, so I'm like you. You're not starting from ground zero. You're not starting from being just real and open and who you are. You're, you're, you're already starting in a, in a, in a place that's not going to connect, isn't it? Yeah, so not just, you know, my first thought is very selfishly, wow, what a relief. I don't have to be wearing a suit because <laughs> I don't even have a suit <laughs> or anything like it. Um, but also, I guess, nice for them because they not met with another you know, person that's inside a box that is fitting into this world, which again is, as you say, is made up. So, yeah, and I can, I can work with that. Like, I can see that it's been putting me off that sort of mm, do I fit into that? Do I have to be this? Because I'm, because I know I'm not and I, and I can't be that. I never have. And I, and I, it's just not. So I feel that I can be myself. If I can be myself and, and they like, what I bring, then great. And if they don't, I guess it, we wouldn't be working together anyway because, you know. Yeah, that's really great. Mm. I can actually see myself having a coffee with someone from the corporate world. You know, the, the other thing that occurs to me, Kirsten, is 
you keep saying corporate world like it's like Paul has gone the corporate <laughs> world. Where is this located? Mm. It, it, you live with someone from the corporate world. You're married to someone from the corporate world, right? Mm. They're, they're just, it's made of human beings. It's made of real people. Some of them do yoga, right? <laughs> Some of them yes. will be very spiritual. Some of them mm. will not. Mm. They're, they're human beings. And, and every business is different. Some businesses really embrace mindfulness, well-being, meditation. They might be more open to what you're saying. I know it's not three principles, but they might be more pointing in that direction. There might be other organizations who aren't. And you just don't know. Yeah. But the key point, I think you said this earlier, was really listening. Because then you're meeting the client where they're at. That's when you really fall into, that's real rapport, right? That's when you really fall into that space and connect. And what I find is when I'm thinking about me, when I'm worried about how do I look, how are they going to perceive me, how am I coming across, then, I, then I'm not listening because I've got all this thinking going on about me. Yeah. When I drop all of that, that's when I can really listen to the other person. That's when we can fall into that space. And we might fall into that space and it might make sense for us not to work together. Yeah. What you said about me, the making it this corporate world. Yes, totally. I totally. It's just people like everyone else. Mm. So it's almost, it's almost like I've made up this, this group of people that are like aliens to me because you know, because of what they do and what they wear and, you know, what their world is supposedly like. And, and it's not. So, so now we don't have to worry about this confidence thing, all right? No, no. It's just a feeling which changes moment to moment. Mm. So now we don't have to worry about that. I'm curious as to what your next step is now. <laughs> My next step is... Um... My next step is I will actually send those emails that I have been promising people to send for so long that I've been saying, well, drop me an email and I'll get you in contact with my HR person or with my business partner or whatever. And I've, I've just never sent that email. I've always said whenever I bump into that friend or whoever it is again, and there's a few of them, yeah, 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 I will do, I will do, I will do. And I'm feeling at the same time really bad that I'm not, you know, that I'm, not showing up. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to, I'm going to get in contact to arrange to meet up and have a chat. Because that's all it is. It's just that. Hmm. It's pretty amazing, no? Mm. It always amazes me how simple it is and how complicated I think it all is. Until I'm pointed to, nah, it's much simpler than that. Mm. Yeah. And, and here's something I want to just say. 
this is exactly what you can do for these people. This is what, this is not about me. Oh, Kush is so good, whatever. No, my coach does this for me. When I'm with something and I'm really close to it, it can look really complicated. And my coach helps me see just how simple it is. Right? And in that same way, some of these people are going to be like, oh, we've got a well-being problem, we've got a stress problem, we've got an X problem. And and knowing what you know about the principles, you can come in and go, oh, right, yeah, that's because they're, they're trying to solve this as an outside-in problem, and it's not an outside-in yeah. problem. Yeah. And so for you, you can help them see how simple it is. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it's so it's so funny. I, I was teaching my well being course last night and and actually one of the ladies that was there was saying, So actually it's really simple and I went, Yes, absolutely, it is really quite simple. But what I'm seeing now is that when working with 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 people from the corp corporate world, I have been making them into something set into something different, into some other species, which they're not. They're just humans, like mm. like the people in my course. They did. They they, you know, mm. this yeah. Yeah. Still simple. <laughs> Mm. Thank will, you very much. will you come back and in in this video that's posted in the comments below will you will you let us know how you get on with these emails yes i will i will you might tell me to shut up at some point when i go no. right so i'm gonna meet someone now um yes no i will absolutely it's been really helpful really really helpful my husband will be really pleased because he's been going on at me. He's, when are you actually going to get back to my friends? And I'm like, yeah, I will. I, 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 I will. I promise. Just go and meet them. I'm like, yeah, 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 I will. And he'll be so pleased because <laughs> I'm actually doing it. Mm. Good, mm. good. Thank you. And, Thank and if you anyone that. else can re relate to this, if this has inspired anyone else to go and, and reach out to people that they've been putting off, please let me know. I'm really curious to hear how – I love hearing how these little videos – how they're not only impacting the person that I'm coaching, but if they're impacting or inspiring you, let me know. If they're annoying you, let me know too. You know, what, whatever's coming <laughs> up, I'd love to hear from, from everyone and, and see how they're landing. And I initially did, said I wanted to do five of these, but I started on a Tuesday. Uh, if you'd like me to, if these are helpful for people, if you'd like me to carry on, I, I'm thinking I might do a few more, might do a few more than five. I might do another two or three next week. So if this would be of interest, again, let me know. And uh, my, my little plug at the end of this, as I always do, um, I'm so passionate about helping coaches. I'm so passionate about people like Kirsten and everyone else that have coached this week take what they know of the principles and really go out and help people because I think it would be so beneficial not only for them but for not only for the people they coach but everyone that those people touch as well and there's so many ripples. So part of that is is I'm bringing Steve over to the UK um, 9th and 10th of June and we're doing this whole webinars uh, series around it to really really support coaches so if you're interested let me know um, and uh, if not keep enjoying all of these videos and I, and I hope you guys are getting a lot of pleasure out of it and I will also say for one final thing Steve and I are going to be doing a Facebook live today at 2 p.m. so that's in two hours and 20 minutes from now at 2 p.m. on my on my personal page on my timeline so if you're interested then, uh, then log into that at 2 p.m. Thanks, Kirsten. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you.